Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to He Walks With Us Everywhere. I'm Tracy, and today is the 1st of November in the year of our Lord, 2023. We will continue our daily readings, our daily word of encouragement with the Puritans. And this morning's reading, this morning's reading is coming out of 1 Peter, and we'll be in chapter 1 and verse 8. And the month of November, I like to, I'm going to start each month with just a little tidbit about our reading, where they're coming from. And so for the month of November, it's from a gentleman named Thomas Vincent. And Vincent was around in 1634 to 1678. He was a Puritan minister, and he was most famous for his ministry to various congregations throughout the London plague in 1665. While numerous people left the area for fear of infection, Vincent stayed behind and ministered to the sick and dying in their homes, void of all fear of death. He thus won interdenominational respect, and his sermons went through many editions. His meditation on the plague, God's Terrible Voice in the City, 1667, ran through 16 editions within a short period of time. His equally popular Ode to the Christian's Love to Christ, The True Christian's Love to the Unseen Christ, 1677, from which this month's readings are taken, likewise went through numerous 17th century reprints. Vincent was also known for his short work on the shorter Catechism of the Westminster Assembly. Hallelujah to that. A man of God who stood in the face of literal death not just numbers flashing on a screen and said, we are, we're not afraid. We serve Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So this is what first Peter chapter one and verse eight says, whom having not seen ye love in whom though now ye see him not yet believing ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. And this is titled love to Christ. The life of Christianity consists very much in our love to Christ. Without love to Christ, we are as much without spiritual life as a carcass when the soul is fled from it without natural life. Faith without love to Christ is a dead faith, and a Christian without love to Christ is a dead Christian, dead in sins and trespasses. Without love to Christ, we may have the name of Christian, but we are holy without the nature. We may have the form of godliness, but are holy without the power. Give me thine heart is the language of God to all the children of men, Proverbs twenty three twenty six, And give me thy love is the language of Christ to all his disciples. Christ knows the command and influence which love to him in the truth and strength of it has how it will engage all the other affections of his disciples for him that if he have their love their desires will be chiefly after him their delights will be chiefly in him their hopes and expectations will be chiefly from him their hatred fear grief anger will be carried forth chiefly unto sin, as it is offensive unto him. He knows that love will engage and employ for him all the powers and faculties of their souls. Their thoughts will be brought into captivity and obedience unto him. Their understandings will be employed in seeking and finding out his truths. Their memories will be receptacles to retain them. Their consciences will be ready to accuse and excuse as his faithful deputies. Their wills will choose and refuse according to his direction and revealed pleasure. Hallelujah. It's all about Jesus. And when we love him, we're alive in our faith. We're alive in our love. You know, it's our love that keeps carrying us forward. The Lord wants us to give him our hearts, right? Give me thy heart. And then he wants to have us give him our love. Give him thy love. Love him. Obey him. 
This is how we love him, by keeping his commands. And there is an influence of the Lord on our lives. When we're walking in obedience to the Most High God, there is effectual change that occurs in our life. There is this transformation of who we are in Christ. Does it mean we're perfect? Oh my goodness, absolutely not. But does it mean that we're striving always toward what is pleasing to our Heavenly Father? It does. You know, there will be there will be jealousies in this world, y'all. There will be men and women who are supposedly the body of Christ, whose fleshy parts that haven't been crucified yet will get in the way, and the jealousies will scream and become louder. And let me just say that the Lord will deal with all of them, all those who were actually walking in hatred and jealousy and or envy, all the things that the Lord detests, he's going to take care of it. He'll deal with it. You know, there, there are probably some of y'all who have family members or people who you thought were your friends who just seem to hate you. They seem to be jealous of you. Well, that's okay. I mean, it's not okay, but we'll be okay, right? Because the Lord says, blessed are you. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you and speak all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. For great is your reward in heaven. He tells us to rejoice and be exceeding glad. He sees it all. He sees it all. The intent of the heart, the motive behind it, what's really driving somebody forward. He sees those, you know, those colleagues, if you're at work, who are stepping all over you, putting you down, speaking all manner of evil against you to get ahead. He sees all of that and he will deal with it. The Lord says, vengeance is mine. I will repay it. It's not a question of if, it's a matter of time, right? And his timing in all things is perfect. We just keep walking as humble servants to the Most High God. That's our focus, you see. That's our purpose. Our purpose is love. But there are times in our lives where we have to make tough decisions, where we have to make decisions that are glorifying to our Father, that please Him above men. And they're not often easy decisions to be made, but that's our whole job. It's to please God, not ourselves, not man, not our pocketbooks, not our dainties, right? It's not to please us. We make decisions in our love to our Heavenly Father because we love Him so much. That's our job. All the details, He works out, you see. My job, what He led me to, is eyes down, nose in my word. My mind needs to be fixed upon Him all the day long, as does each one of us. That's our job. And who he brings along the way to drop seeds to, we glorify him for that. Focus is to love him and to serve him. And in doing that, seeds will be dropped. We will be planting. He chooses the garden. He chooses the garden. We just have to be willing to walk into it. Without love to Christ, we may have the name of Christian, but we are holy without the nature. We may have the form of godliness, but are holy without the power. How very true are those words. People out there have sure got the name of Christian, but they are indeed completely without the nature of Christ Jesus. And, you know, what is love? What is the love of God look like? Because I've seen it. I've seen a lot in this walk. I've seen a lot. I've seen real Christ followers who exemplify the very love of Christ, who are his hands and feet, who go forth and do the works that the Lord calls them unto, who would give you the shirt off their back and never expect a thing in return. I've seen real Christian love. 
I've seen a I've seen the form of godliness, denying the power thereof. I've seen those who they beat their chest and wave their flag around that they are from the most high God, that they are obedient. And I've seen the complete opposite of that in walks that I've watched in, in this life. And Jesus says that we'll know his disciples by the way that they love. We'll know them from the way that they love. And if there is one thing that I know of myself, it's that I have had true love, true love in my heart for, you know, the people in my life. And only God can measure the meat of that love from others. I want Christ to be seen in me. That's what I want. I think that there's a lot of pomp and envy and ego and arrogance and jealousy that is blocking many people's way in this world and in those who are in the body of Christ itself and what a sad state of affairs but then the Lord reminds me that there there is wheat and there is chaff definition of chaff and it says the husk or dry calyx of corn and grasses in common language the word is applied to the husks when separated from the corn by thrashing, ridding, sorry, riddling or winnowing. The word is sometimes used rather improperly to denote straw cut from the food of cattle, refuse, worthless matter, especially that which is light and apt to be driven by the wind. In scripture, false doctrines, fruitless designs, hypocrites, and ungodly men are compared to chaff. There is a the wheat and the chaff. Let's I'm gonna go there really quick. Let's see. Let's try Matthew 3 12. Matthew 3 12. Um yeah, I can share that. You can see it says, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. So how important is it? False doctrines, fruitless designs, hypocrites, ungodly men. There's going to be a separating of the wheat and the tares, and then it's going to get even even finer separation, right? Wheat and chaff, the light, fluffy stuff that just blows away. And only the Lord knows. Only the Lord knows who is who. You know, he says that. He says, let the wheat and the tares grow up together until the harvest. All I know is that I want to stay in the word of God. I want to continue to do his work that's set before me and be pleasing unto our heavenly father. And what a beautiful day it is. It's a gorgeous day. It's you know freezing cold here right now, but I know that the Lord will warm it up throughout the day. And I just glorify his holy name. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Abba, good morning, Father. We thank you for giving us a new day, for giving us a new chance to walk with you in the ways that you have set before us. Help us to not miss any open doors, Lord. Help us to be willing to take the steps that you lead us to take. Lord, teach our hearts how to come to you in prayer before making any decisions before going in any directions teach us how to be still and listen to our shepherd's voice thank you for guiding us along these journeys lord thank you for being with us each step of the way father we ask that you would shield each one of us protect us this day from every attack visible and invisible that comes our way we ask for you to just place a hedge of protection around us and our families, our homes and our pets, our vehicles, our places of business. Lord, we ask for your sovereign hand of protection to be upon us this day. Let no harm come unto us, Lord. We ask that you would go and wage war against our enemies, Father. You tell us vengeance is yours. You will repay it. Help us to stand in that knowing that your perfect ways 
in your perfect timing and will, you will take care of all things and that we need not fear or fret or stress or worry about anything, that we need to be about our Father's business. God, help us to be about your business every day of our life. Let nothing become bigger than walking this out in spirit and in truth to please you, Father. Help us this day if we have put anyone or anything in a place of importance of pleasing before you. Lord, you are the most important person, the most important thing, the most important work that each one of us has. Keep us, Lord, in the right frame of mind. Keep us ever focused upon you. Help us to be so entrenched in your word and in your love that it would be evident to those around us who we serve. Lord, forgive us this day for anything that we have thought or said or done that is against you, anything that is even remotely not glorifying to you, forgive us, Father. Cleanse and purify us. Make us whiter than snow. Lord, in your chastisement, forget not mercy. In your correction, have compassion upon us. And Lord, we thank you for your compassion. Thank you for being long-suffering. Help us to remain faithful no matter what we walk through, Lord. Increase our faith. Help our unbelief. Make us the men and women of God that you have created us to be, Father. Your ways are perfect. You are perfect in everything. Let us trust you, God. Help us to trust you with every aspect of our lives. Help us to put our families and their salvation. Help us to put them into your loving hands and to know that you have made promises to the faithful that we can stand in because it is the truth. You do not lie, nor will you ever. And I thank you, Lord. I thank you for being constant in my life. I thank you for never walking away from me. I thank you for always having the best in mind for my life and Zoe's life and for the hearers' lives, that you always have what is best for us and you work all things together for good. Lord, help us to continue to be obedient unto you and submiss submissive unto you that you are our covering, you're the cornerstone, you're our chief, you are our father, you're our king, and you are the precious truth of the reason why we're even here this day. It is to glorify you and to magnify you. May your name be glorified every day of our lives, and may your words spring forth from us, the living waters that they are, and may your word go forward and continue to do all that you would have it to do through our through our mouths, just through us being willing vessels to deliver your message, Lord, because it is all about you. It is all about Jesus. It is all about your eternal weight of glory. Truly, there is nothing else that matters, Lord. I love you, Father. We love you with all of our heart mind, soul, and strength. Help us to always glorify you. Let our flight be not in the winter, nor on the Sabbath day. We ask for you to come. Lord Jesus, come quickly. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, y'all. Well, I love all of you, and I do hope you have a wonderful day. Stay in the Word. Get in the Word. Read it. Listen to it. Live it experience it let it live in you you know the the lord is faithful and true he's awesome he's for us and not against us the commandments of god are still alive and well we need to be obedient the old testament is just as important as the new testament i know that might be a news flash to someone out there but it is jesus christ kept the commandments of god and he says if you love me keep my commandments. So let's do it. Let's keep the commandments of God this day. 
Let's do what he tells us to do. Let's live our lives according as he tells us to live our lives and let's glorify him all the day long. And there is really nothing better than serving our God. I love all of you. Lord willing, I will see y'all here tomorrow.